So today I'm thrilled to be joined by Debbie Gilbert of Viva Business Support, a marketing agency supporting SMEs with digital marketing. Debbie is also the founder of the hugely successful Three Counties Expo and is an expert on all things business awards with her own national awards and podcast series entitled The Business Awards Show. So welcome, Debbie, and thanks for joining me on the Happy Trading Podcast. It's great to have you on. So for our listeners and viewers, um, it'd be great to start just by understanding a little bit more about your backstory, how you got into marketing, and in particular for SMEs and local businesses. Oh, well, thanks, Steve. Thanks for inviting me on today. Um, so I'm in my 25th year in business this year. So it's my jubilee year. So it's quite exciting. You don't get it. <laughs> and um, I fell into marketing really through, um, I owned uh, a networking, well, I still own a networking company. And um, pre sort of digital era, when we were still doing very much traditional marketing uh, tactics, I kind of got into the marketing industry then. Uh, so evolved from that to do my Chartered Institute of Marketing qualification and built the business really through the network of people that I knew that needed help with their marketing um, and social media, LinkedIn training. And the exhibitions um, sort of spawned from uh, the, the large network that I'd built. And it was like, well, what else can we do to promote small businesses and get them the leads that they need? So we started the Three Counties Expo back in 2016. I had run a business exhibition before that in 2012, which was really successful and kind of thought I need to look at ways that we can get businesses together from different counties because I felt that that was what was really lacking um, was the cross-border networking. People were just sort of networking in their own little towns and uh, cities without thinking about the wider aspects of their business and how far they could reach. So the Three Counties Expo was born from that really and the business awards um i started in 2015 again born out of my own experience of of winning awards and realizing that at that time there was a gap in the market for female business awards so i think business ideas can really evolve from your own personal experiences mm -hmm. yeah yeah so then just um thinking about uh, our audience uh, the traders um, locally based businesses um, so really need to sort of get their brand um, and business established locally so a lot of what you do is helping um, local uh, SMEs and, and businesses kind of get established locally through the channels that you're talking about through um, local expos through awards so if we look at um, expos, uh, for example, trade shows, um, mm. you know, what's, what's in your experience, how have trades used those, um, to gain awareness and customers locally? So over the years, we've had lots of different trades businesses that have exhibited at our shows. And I think, um, they, it's a great vehicle to meet a lot of people in one day and get your brand out there. Yeah. And I think they, they've leveraged that through the sort of the content of their stands really and the strategy behind what they're doing there's no point in just sort of booking a stand at a business exhibition and rocking up on the day with a banner and a few business cards you know you have to strategically think about what it is you want to promote what data do you want to collect and what you're going to have on your stands that is going to entice people over and in fact, one of the most successful stands that we ever had from a tradesperson was a plumbing company and they bought along a toilet and they filled it with sweets and they did guess the number of sweets in the toilet. Yeah. But you see, people wanted to come over and chat with him because they were intrigued what was in this toilet because <laughs> he had very brightly colored sweets in it. And the conversations that evolved from that, you know, obviously, do translate into clients eventually. So I think having something interesting on your stand that's kind of going to get people engaged with what you're doing. Um, we had an, a firm of electricians once and they had created this light game and it was light switches on a, on a circuit board. Um, 
and people had to sort of click a switch and depending on what color the light bulb was was whatever prize that they won or something it was mm. it was very ingenious and i think trades people can create something which is interactive and interesting um and think about you know at the end of the day if you're going to do a prize draw for something do a prize draw for a discount on your services or an add-on for your services rather than um you know a bottle of champagne because otherwise you're just going to get people who are interested in winning a bottle of champagne yeah. but if you did 10 percent off your you know boiler service or your electrical check or something simple like that yeah. you're going to get people entering that draw to win that and they are definitely going to be somebody who's interested in an electrical check or a a plumbing service yeah so you've got to stand out of these things haven't you rather than uh blend in with everybody uh with everybody else um thinking about sort of um pre-show you know the build-up to the show what would be your your sort of best advice on on the build-up to the show rather than just rocking up with your toilet full of sweets you know what would you say beforehand so we advise our exhibitors to we actually send pre-written posts to them to share on social media to say look we're exhibiting at this event come along and meet us we're going to have something exciting on our stand we're not going to tell you what it is you've got to come to the show to find out okay um emailing your list if you've got one to tell people you're going to be there putting it on your own website maybe creating a blog or a video uh, or both um, talking about the fact you're going to be there because sometimes people we all lead busy lives and sometimes people um, may have been thinking about contacting you and they just haven't and they think oh they're going to be at that show I'll go along and meet them um, so I think you use it as a as a platform to facilitate introductions to people really I mean one thing I always talk to my trade clients about is um, you know, they, they can be quite wary, especially if they're aiming at the domestic market to attend sort of business networking and sort of business trade shows. But one thing I always say to them is at the end of the day, not only are you going to make lots of good business connections, but any business owner has also got a house. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so you're not. So it's a double whammy. You're going to pick up, uh, you know, some really good business contacts that could be good for the commercial side of your business. But also, you know, you're going to be picking up people that have got homes anyway. So it's it's a it's a double whammy. What um what what would be your advice? So you know, we've we've prepared for the show. Um, we've had a great show. We've we've brought our toilet full of sweets, um, or whatever. Um, there's lots of great ideas out there. Um, post show, what what's your advice to get the most sort of bang for your buck? Having you know been at the show, taken lots of details. What what's your advice um, for after the event? Well, just just prior to that, can I just mention, because I didn't mention it, and I think it's really important, is always have more than one person on your stand. Yeah. So go with at least two people so that one person can go around and talk to the other exhibitors and participate in any other networking that might be going on throughout the show. And, you know, sometimes you get really busy on the stand and you don't want to be that person that someone walks away because they can't speak to you. So try and have two people at least on your stand. And a method of collecting data. Um, so, I mean, we've all got iPads these days. That's a really good way to get people's information quickly um, without filling in pieces of paper. And then try and have your diary with you so that if people want to book in for you to go around and do a quote for a job, you can literally get that appointment in the diary or get a phone call in the diary to talk to them more about yeah. the job. So be prepared on the day to have all of those things there with you. And then after the show, um, get on the phone to people the next day and follow up. Don't send emails. The temptation is to collect all the data and just send one email saying, thanks for meeting you at the show. Um, you know, this is our services, get in touch. The problem with that is that if you've not had email dialogue with that person before, you're probably going to go into spam. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to see it. And if they do see it, the chances are it's going to be a quite a few days later. So my advice is just to get phone numbers off of people and get someone the next day to get on the phone and say, oh, it's great meeting you at the show. You mentioned you were interested in new central heating or whatever it might have been that you're promoting. Um, can we book in an appointment to talk to you more about it? Do you have any questions? That kind of thing. So 
48 hours maximum, really. So if you do a show on the Wednesday, you want to have followed up by the Friday, mm. you know, um, you just need to be on it really quickly. And I think that's the same for any marketing. If, if you're getting driving leads through your social media, you need to be on the phone to those people. They're hot leads. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And that's the biggest mistake that I see with people. They they just send out bulk emails and add people to their database. That really isn't going to probably yeah. convert to a, to a paid job. And you mentioned something there about uh, social media, which, of course, is another great opportunity with um, local trade shows, expos, yeah. is uh, it gives you a great opportunity for, um, inform- um, you know, for posts for your social media. What what would be your advice there uh, for, for anyone, really, uh, attending a trade show to maximise the social opportunity? So, I mean, you can go around to other stand holders, take some photos with them, tag them in the posts because then you capitalize on the viral nature of those posts um you can tag the organizers you can tag speakers if you go into some workshops um you could do a little video while you're there we had that last week where people were taking little videos and yeah. putting them out onto social media i think the tagging is quite crucial because then you're capitalizing on other people's networks yeah and you know other store holders will appreciate the fact that they're getting some publicity from your post as well. So I think it's trying to think strategically. And I think if you just turn up on your own, it's really difficult to try and do all of the things we're talking about. Mm. If you've got somebody with you, you can say, right, can you go off and just do a few little videos and take some photos, take photos of your stand, have photos of you talking to people, um, we used to, to, you know, if I exhibit, we will often take photos of people who visit our stand mm. with with us and say, oh, you know, do you use LinkedIn? And we'll tag them. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely yeah. try and do as much activity as you can. Yeah, big opportunity there. So we've got, you know, social media. We've got, um, you know, making your stand uh, memorable, uh, following up, you know, um, really quickly after the event trying to book, um, you know, appointments on the day, trying to not, you know, if you can close somebody down, you can get an appointment in your diary, take your diary with you. Have you got any other sort of tips you wanted to share on getting the most from Expos? I think when you get the programme, you should get a list of all the other exhibitors. So connect up with all all of those two. Yeah. And connect up with speakers and see who in that exhibitor list have you got synergy with? You know, who potentially could you work during joint ventures or, you know, there, there will be people on that list, companies on that list and follow up with them as well. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's that's all. There's so many great nuggets in there. Um, OK, so this is a sort of podcast in two halves, I guess. Uh, half one, we're talking about um, business expos as uh, one channel of marketing um and then the other thing that i wanted to sort of talk to you about and get your advice and expertise on um is business uh, awards local business awards and national business awards um so you know when we're talking with uh with tradies you know we always talk to them about having a sort of multi-channel marketing approach um trying to do as many of of the right things as they can to to get noticed uh, locally of course for a lot of trades and especially new ones coming into uh, starting their own business um you know building up trust and authority locally can be an issue if you haven't got lots of uh, reviews um and you haven't been established for too long um you're not always going to get lots of word of mouth so um, what I was keen to talk to you about as well on this episode are local business awards, because that is one way that a tradie can accelerate that process really quickly um, to, to build up that trustworthiness that's so important um, to be building their local brand. So I just I was really keen to sort of understand from your perspective um, how you've seen local trades um, using awards uh, to grow their business and grow their brand yeah i mean i've worked with a lot of trades businesses over the years with writing their award entries and advising them about awards um and also with my own awards um i don't write award entries for my own awards let me just put that out there i do write them for others yeah. um but we have a trades women category in uh, the best business women awards you know we are really passionate about promoting trades women um and getting them 
you know, more publicity. But in terms of general advice, um, the thing is, it is like you said, it's a bit of a, you know, catch 22 situation when you're in the early phases of a startup. Say you started a trades business within the last two or three years and you, you know, you've got to rely on getting, trying to get Google reviews from people or tra- check a trader reviews, et cetera. But what awards can do for you is it externally validates your business. So it gives you that validation from a judging panel who've looked at your business and all the processes that you've got within that business and the track record of the business so far. And it gives you that external validation. Um, And as a new business, most local awards will have a new business category. Mm. Um, So if you're looking at county awards, then you will need to check because most of them will have a new business category. And from that, once you've got a badge that says you're a finalist or a winner in a new business category, it gives the consumer a bit more confidence, I think, in terms of, okay, so this business has been externally validated and has won an award. Yeah. And it is, it's another accreditation, really. Um, when you're looking at national awards or trades awards, because there is awards for air conditioning, plumbing, electricians specifically, um, again, what that does is if you want to go for bigger contracts, commercial contracts, I'm thinking here, and you've got that, again, external validation of your business and you've won an award for your business, you are more likely to be put forward to win that contract. And I think they've done loads of surveys on this with consumers. And I think the stats are that a consumer is about 85, 90% more likely to choose an award-winning business over one that hasn't. Definitely, yeah. Um, And I think, you know, as consumers, we all want that confidence that the tradesperson that we're using is going to be reliable, is going to do a good job and has got good after sales, you know, support if there's a problem, you know, afterwards. Um, I think where tradespeople approach it incorrectly is they don't fill the application in properly and they don't get the right advice. And I've worked with a lot of trades businesses over the years who come to me for help who've said, this is the entry we submitted, we didn't get shortlisted. And I've looked at it and gone, okay, I can tell you straight away why. And that's because they didn't put sufficient detail in. Because most trades people that I've worked with over the years are really good at what they do. You know, they're good plumbers, good electricians, good builders, but filling in award entries is not their forte. So find someone who can help you fill it in properly and actually drill down the details because what the judges want to see is your journey your business journey yeah and they want to understand what processes underpin your business and they do want to know what profit that you've made as well but they also want to understand how you look after your customers and as I mentioned earlier you know what is your sales process and how do you look after your customers Mm. so all of those things put together into an award entry um should secure you a finalist or a winning slot Mm. if it's done properly and from that you've then got the networking opportunity at the final so again a lot of people don't maximize this and that is about if you do get selected um, or you do win you've got to maximize that opportunity and I see so many people that just don't maximize it at all yeah and, and as we said, as with um, business expos, you know, every person you meet in business is going to be a homeowner and a potential referral opportunity, um, a potential uh, partner, uh, depending on the, you know, the types of awards that you go, go for. Um, so what you're really saying here is, um, you know, look to hire a professional to help. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, com- complete the application. Um, yeah. As we know, supplying evidence is, is really important as he's answering the questions as fully as possible, right? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, look for some of the other categories as well that, um, for example, if, you've been, if you're a well-established trades business, then you'd want to be looking for, it might be best, medium or large business. Um, there are categories for apprenticeships. So if you took on an apprentice, there's often best apprenticeship categories or a training development category. So one of the businesses I worked with, um, firm of electricians, and they were sort of having four or five apprentices through their business every year. 
and they went on to win a training and development award, which again um, is going to entice people to want to work for your company. If you are winning awards for the way you treat your trainees, um, it's another sweetener because um, we all know that there are huge shortages in the trades industry of people yeah, yeah. coming in um, and you want to make your business the most appealing to work for. Absolutely. Um, and just coming back to something you, you mentioned a few moments ago about uh, awards and there being lots of studies and lots of reports that consumers are heavily swayed um, by uh, working or using an award-winning business. I mean, I've done a lot of testing over the years with landing pages, um, you know, coming directly from places like Google Ads and social media. And overwhelmingly, you know, if you put an award, obviously a bona fide award, you can't just make one up, but a bona fide award on the page, um, conversion rates increase dramatically. Mm. Um, you know, I think there is this stigma or stereotype that you know awards are not important but um they're crucial i think to to growing and scaling your business and they're great at both ends i've seen trade businesses that have just kind of uh, starting out use what you said there which is the new business category to sort of get noticed and then as they're growing and they're getting more customer reviews coming in and they're customer service and uh, experiences going up then they'll look to enter customer um, you know, customer service awards uh, categories. Um, and then when they're looking to scale, you know, and, and when they're building their business and they want that further validation because they want more and bigger commercial contracts, um, you know, then they're going for some of the bigger awards um, that are based on, say, turnover or, or you know, size of business. So I, I see them working at all, all sort of ends of, of the business spectrum. That's it. And once you've won an award, no one's going to take it off you. Yeah. It's it's an evergreen. It's you know it's a trophy in your cabinet, but it's a it's a logo on your website. But it is something that you need to capitalize on and get some PR out there. Um, and you know you might be called upon to be a commentator on a particular topic. We've seen this with the Best Business Women Awards. Certainly, the women that have won the trades categories and the STEM categories. Um, often, the news um, will want a commentator on a topic. And they will call you, mm. um, you know, one of the companies that I'm doing work with, you know, they employ apprenticeship mechanics. Um, they're a training garage for mechanics. And he has just got um, a TV show Amazing. on yesterday. Amazing. And so there are lots of opportunities that can spin off from this. Mm. Um, it all boils down to visibility. And awards and expos are another vehicle for visibility, along with all your digital products. Someone said to me last week, oh, you know, I can't see the point of expos and awards in a world where everything's digital and I can press a button and I can get leads through Google and Facebook. Of course you can. Of course you can. But fundamentally, we are still human beings that require interaction with other human beings. Absolutely. And you know, because there are a lot of people that have that attitude nowadays, be the person that that is out there meeting people, getting known in your local area, you know, sponsoring the local football club, being at local business shows, being at local networking events, because you will be the person that comes to mind when someone says, oh, my boiler's broken down. Who do you know? Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and the other the other aspect to it as well is there's so many emerging sort of technologies with renewables and things like that where people want they want more information directly, you know, uh, like you say, face to face, you know, so with, uh, you know, EV chargers and EV charging, you know, there's uh, there's a big opportunity to take your product, you know, in front of the consumer rather than, you know, it being sort of behind the website. Um, one thing I wanted to cover, um, because this always comes up, I see it all the time on, on LinkedIn, and and I know you, you know, you will see it all the time as well, is uh, when people start mentioning about business awards, there's always the naysayers that say, oh, yeah, but, you know, you'll only be a finalist or win if you book a table and everything else. So I wanted to take this opportunity to completely dispel that nonsense we'll call it what it is it's bollocks right mm. um you know i'm sure there are some very unscrupulous awards but in the main all the awards i've come across um are based on independent judging so i wanted you know to, for you to sort of take us through 
um, the typical kind of judging process and dismill, dis, dispel the complete bollocks. When you're entering any awards, you've got to do your due diligence. And that involves looking at the website, looking at who the judges are. Is there a judging process? And understanding what's involved when you enter, what sort of questions you're going to be asked. Now, yes, there are a lot of these voting contests out there. To me, if you're going to enter something and it relies on votes to win it, well, then that's a popularity contest. That's not a proper business award. Mm. A business award is effectively a competition because you're submitting your information, you're answering the questions, and then a, a proper judging panel will have a set of criteria for each question and they will score you according to the responses that you give for each of those questions, yeah? And then the people with the highest scores will be chosen as finalists and the people with the highest score will probably win their category. Mm. Um, I can't speak for all awards, but I know that there are at least eight, ten national awards that I could, you know, reel off that run on that sort of system. Yeah. Um, some awards will require you to go in for a meeting with the judges or it might be done on Zoom uh, nowadays. And that might be that you've been shortlisted so far, but you then have to have an interview with the judging panel. That happens, uh, especially with national awards. But I do know some local awards that do still do that. Mm. So I think the, the thing is to really look at the awards, first of all, and understand what the process is, because you might be required to do a presentation. That also yeah. happens. Um, you might be required to do an interview and you might have several rounds of judging to get through because it does depend and with the trade awards certainly I know some of them have that process so I think in terms of the people that tell me oh well only if you buy a table or you know the sponsor judges will you win mm -hmm. um is in my experience absolute nonsense yeah. in our awards best business women awards last year we had I think three winners who came on their own so they bought one ticket. Yeah. So, you know, we certainly are not looking for people to give awards to who buy tickets because yeah. for us, the winners have, and finalists have been decided before the tickets even go on sale. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's the case for a lot of awards, not all, but there is a lot of awards out there that only put their tickets on sale once the finalist list has been announced. Mm. So therefore that's absolute rubbish. Yeah. But do check. With some awards, they will, if you're not coming to the final, they will disqualify you. We don't do that because yeah. I feel if you've entered a competition and you've been chosen, um, if you don't come, well, you're going to miss out on the, the party and the celebration and the photos and all of that digital juice. But we don't disqualify. But there's some awards do disqualify you. It's in the terms and conditions. If you don't buy a ticket, you yeah. will be disqualified. So I think read the TNCs, do your research, see what social media that the awards are doing. How much publicity are you going to get on the back of it? Because our awards on the night, our reach last year was over 250,000 wow. across our platforms. Yeah. You know, we can look at that afterwards. We know that was the reach and we calculate it every year. When I talk to some of our winners after our awards, they'll say to me that the spike in their traffic to their website that night went up. Mm -hmm. um, SEO benefits are huge. Backlinking to us, so you backlink to the awards company, they backlink to you. So there's a lot of stuff wrapped around this. And to say that they're a con and they're a fix, that tends to come from disgruntled people who've not won the award. Yes. You know, that's yeah. sour grapes. Yeah, um, there's a big difference, right? Yeah, and there's always going to be more people who are finalists than that there are winners. Mm. But act like a winner. Yeah. You know, they are some of the best photographs that we see of people, you know, arms in the air, cheering away, and they've not necessarily won their category, but they're acting like a, yeah. they've won their category. 
I just want to come back to something you, you said there um, because it, it's just kind of triggered a, a thought, which is um, so when you enter the awards and if you're fortunate enough to be a finalist, uh, even if you don't win, obviously there's a great opportunity there. But when it, you know, a winner or runner up, you're going to drive a huge amount of, mm -hmm. of traffic to your website and to your social media. So I think, you know, the big thing there is to make sure that your shop window is kind of mm -hmm. properly merchandise so to speak you know so your website is on point you've got all your product services make sure your website's up make sure all your calls calls to action in place make sure you've got an opportunity to collect people's details um, make sure I guess that you've got uh, posts on your blog and and on your news sections that identify that you know that you're up for an award and and this is when it is so yeah make make sure that everything about your website is on point right yeah definitely and I think you know, what's satisfying to me is when winners um, and we, we do silver winners and gold winners, um, they come back to me and say, you know, the day after the awards, I opened my emails and I've got six inquiries. That's incredible. Six inquiries. I mean, yes, great, because what's happened is people have posted and they've posted and people have been sharing and people are looking on social media and going, oh, actually, I need that. Oh, well go on their website and drop them a message or they drop them a message on Instagram so this is a great opportunity for more visibility in your business and why wouldn't you grab that and have an amazing night of celebration yeah. it's just an incredible night and whatever awards I go to a lot of awards every year uh, I was at the Elite Business 100 Awards I'm a partner for that mm -hmm. last Friday at uh, the Tower Hotel in London and uh, what a great night. And just to be there and celebrate with all of these other businesses who worked incredibly hard. Mm. Um, there was trades businesses there. Joseph yeah. uh, Valentine, who was on The Apprentice, he's got a plumbing company. And uh, he was talking about the way that awards have really helped catapult his business over the years. So, mm. you know, don't miss out on this opportunity because other people are telling you they're a fix and they're a waste yeah. of time. I mean, when, really I, not. when I when I see those posts, I, I do love it. And I can't help because it, it does trigger me. I can't help but replying with all the stuff that we've talked about there. Uh, you know, the PR opportunities, the improvements in SEO, the improvements in your conversion rates. You know, uh, the list is, is so long uh, because people don't realize, you know, they they have their preconceived ideas, probably because they're salty because they've entered an award and haven't won. So therefore all awards are crap. You know, it's that kind of mentality. Um, but actually when you explain it in a post and you sort of go, you know, you're going to get loads of uh, free publicity. You're going to get backlinks coming to your website, which is going to improve your SEO. It's going to give you social media content as long as your arm, you know, to post about for weeks. Um, it's going to um, give you increases in your conversion rate so when people land on your website um you know they're more likely to to make an inquiry the benefits just um are off the scale but um i guess the one thing that we always come back to here is making sure that you've got a professional to write the award entry for you right if writing award entries or generally writing um copy is not a strong point for you yeah then yes if you have someone in your team that can write and that can gather together all the information then by all means do it yourself but even if you get a session with somebody who can give you some advice and a steer um, I do an online awards masterclass which people can buy online I'll perhaps send you the link and you can we'll share it with your yeah. your listeners and I'll give you a little cheeky discount code for your listeners oh. um, so it's, it's it's not expensive it's 47 yeah. pounds and you know we'll give you a little discount that course um will give you all of the information you need to consider when you're entering any awards and there's also a great book that i always talk about i did contribute to it but it isn't my book yeah. it's called winner by denise o'leary yeah and it is a really good guide on takes you through the whole process of uh award entries and how to put together the very best entry you can mm. and i really recommend that book and i think you know just have a look at what your competitors are up to. Yeah. They're not doing anything. Well, then you definitely must be. And if they are, what awards are they entering and where are they getting their traction from? Mm. Because fundamentally, 
you don't want to get left behind. And, you know, on the very basic level with awards, it's a great time to celebrate achievement. And what a better way to do it, you know, than to bring together your team, go for a night out and really celebrate your business because your friends and family don't always understand the struggles of running a business and how difficult it can be. But to be able to go to an event and celebrate with other business owners um, who've all been on that journey, we've all been on that journey. It, it's not easy. Hmm. I think is amazing. Incredible, incredible. There's so many nuggets uh, in this episode. Um, and as, as we always do, you know, we, we sort of um, chop the episode up in, into smaller parts. But what's really, really clear is um, the importance that both uh, visibility at local business expos and entering uh, business awards, what they can do for your business. If you're looking to grow and scale your business, you know, um, local um, business marketing opportunities like these are just so important. Um was there anything you wanted to add on awards that we've not covered? Um, you know, we've sort of covered, obviously, the build up, uh, social media on the night. Um, you know, if you're not uh, sort of well versed at writing entries, getting somebody to do it yourself, um, you know, and, and the PR opportunities afterwards. Is there anything else? That, that, is there anything we've missed, do you think? I think share, share it with your customers as well. I thank them because they're part of that journey. So put um, it in your literature and yeah, uh, and and send an email out and say, yeah. oh, you know, we've won this award. Thank you for being part of our journey. Blah blah. You could use it as a marketing tool to say because we've won this award, we're doing a special offer or something like that. I've seen some some winners do it that way. Get it out into the local press. Um, often the best place to start is your local BBC um, radio station. Right. So what we've seen over the years is if you can get on something like. Um, like where where I'm based, Three Counties Radio, um, is a good basis because a lot of the BBC researchers are looking at who's being interviewed on the, the local levels yeah. and will pull you in for potential regional articles, regional things. Um, local papers, we are seeing obviously a dip in that, but they all have online um, papers now. So you know, again, comes back to the SEO and the traction. So if someone Googles your business and you come up with a news article about the fact you've won an award, Yeah. Um, again, it's great social media juice for you and great SEO juice. Um, and talk, talk to your own trades bodies because often they'll have a trades publication that goes out yeah. and they will feature um, award interviews in there as well. Amazing. Debbie, thank you so much uh, for coming on and talking all things uh, local business marketing, um, local expos, trade shows and business awards. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, expertise and nuggets.